UX, Kaisa is the most, like, that is its most played champion through the spring, spring split. So it's not uh, that surprising to me, but it is more surprising that they're holding off. They're waiting, almost baiting Heishuan to go for that Udyr. I'm expecting Olaf to be what they grab next, just so they know that it is going to be into Udyr and not maybe that Hecarim that could have potentially been picked had it been a first pick Olaf. Uh, this is super weird uh, from LGD. Uh, I I don't really understand why they're going for this draft. I, I, I think Udyr versus Olaf, like, if you're on the Udyr side, you're not even that sad. It's not really a hard counter pick. Most of the times you can still yeah. run away. Sure, you might not be able to kill the Olaf 1v1, but he can't kill you either. And you're, you're still <laughs> you're still the number one top pick in the meta right now. So I'm not sure this trade is worth it, banning three junglers and giving the other side Udyr. This is this is a bit questionable on for me, uh, but you know, it, if it, essentially Quay has to make this work. Quay has to make this dueling potential over Udyr so overpowering that it's justified banning out three junglers. Mm -hmm. As elsewhere in the draft, we see typical bot lane, Grell versus Alistar. Those are like the premier supports whenever you have one banned. Sometimes you see Leona slot in there instead, but these are really the two that have been dominating the meta alongside Olaf and Udyr in the jungle role. As you mentioned, really two champions that aren't necessarily going to be able to dominate one another. It's more about negating what this Udyr is going to try to get. And if Quay is proactive, what I want to see is that they draft something for Colt that can tag team with Quay and try to see if they can actually take on the two top lane in Nuggery and Beishwan instead of just kind of playing it passively like they did last time. I want to see more proactivity out of LGD in the early game. Yeah, I, I, I want to see that as well. They that's their window against FBX, I think, uh, is to uh, it's a fight into the early game and try to index into that one. Um, however, both of these drafts can still go into late game. Um, I feel like Kaisa doesn't have bad scaling whatsoever. However, in, in this bottom lane, we should expect FBX's uh, bottom lane to win a little bit more. They do have to pit push priority. Both of these supports can cancel each other out, uh, barring any mechanical mistakes. Um, and wow, this is super interesting. Actually, interesting. the Tristana might be going into the potential solo lanes. Um, it is a potential okay. flex. We have seen uh, we have seen actually Kramer love to take the uh, uh, like to take the uh, Vayne matchup into the Kaisa, but FPX they are going for just pure team fight. This is the first time this split Doinby is going to play Orianna. <laughs> yeah, uh, is, is it the first time? Or I feel like there is one time. Yeah, only other one other time. Oh, one other time. Has, Excuse me. Yeah, but but very low. It's a very low percentage that Donby has played this champion compared to so many other mid laners who have been prioritizing Orianna throughout the spring split, throughout season 11, while on the other side, it's actually going to be Seraphine. They are truly doubling down on to what I was asking, having a top side that is trying and they are built to win. They are built to succeed, having Seraphine to buff up Quay, even buff up Colt. Those are the two members that are going to try to see if they can bring the fight to Nuggery, bring the fight to Beishwan. So, you know what? I get my wish. Yeah, we can definitely uh, hope that LGD are more aggressive here. They do have one of the best team fight starting compositions you could possibly draft on 11.3. It's going to be Re Magnet Storm Crashdown plus Encore to follow up. Like, that engage combination is so utterly disgusting. There's almost nothing you can do as an Orianna to get away from that one. So if LGD pull the trigger at the right time, they could definitely find themselves very strong teamfight wins. Uh, on the other hand, I want to give attention to Nuggery as he actually chose to take the Gnar last pick into the Jace. Yeah. This is typically Jace favored, and you expect the Jace to win out. But Nuggery must have something up his sleeve. Like, he's he's probably testing himself here, or he's going to come up with some technologies to actually win this side of the, the matchup. So you were talking about this Wombo combo that LGD have. But FPX also have that. If you look at the elements they've got, they've got this Alistar that's going to be able to go and dive into the backline. Beishwan's going to be following up. You have Gnar 
as well when he goes mega if he can get a huge mega nar alt that's going to be a lot to then line up Doenby to be able to get the shockwave to try to see if they can rip apart LGD. It's just which wombo combo is better. That's really what is going to win this game as we get into game two between FPX and LGD. Just looking at the drafts for me, I, I still favor FPX's draft a little bit more. I feel like this is a more versatile draft in general. They can't play front to back a bit better. Their front line in Alistar and Nar much better than the Jace and the Rel combined. So, you know, if it does come down to a straight 5v5, I, I definitely think that FBX are favored. But if LGD have the fans here. I will say that's one of my favorite things is <laughs> having the fans cheering. And now that you're starting to get, you know, not a whole stadium full as it was before, we're still slowly working our way back up there. But even having some fans at all to be able to get those cheers, be able to root them on, it's always a nice mm. feeling for the players themselves to try to see what they're going to be able to do. But right now, Colt, Jason Agrio, good distance away, saying, all right, this is my lane now. And he's got Quay right behind him, so if... Fish One wasn't careful. That could have been their opportunity to lay a trap, but instead they're going to go for a late invade. This is why you pick the Olaf, just for the strong level one opportunities. Uh, but uh, let's see if they actually <laughs> manage. Oh God, this is this is just kind of brutal. They're, they're going to try and take away two camps against uh, the one camp right here. Oriana isn't rotating over, so no help from Doinby. And it looks like they are going to force a split map situation expected unfortunately when you have that late invade from quay hey Shawan, i'm more surprised he tried to counter with the chickens the spot lane 2v2 fight is going a lot further than i expected a lot of damage onto both crisp and lwx giving kramer and chance full control of this lane they're going to be able to get that level two experience lead and be able to control tristana and alistar yeah this is interesting uh i think chris actually uses ability a little bit too early there uh, typically, you do need to, like, play rather defensive level one, keep the headbutt or the uh, the pulverize uh, in case of the crash down. And this uh, split map situation, I actually do, do think favors uh, LGD quite a bit. They have the counter matchup in the top lane, which FBX drafted themselves into. So <laughs> if they can play this well enough, there are a lot of potentials for tower dives. And uh, meanwhile, in the bot lane, um, uh, FPX, they, they also have a potential for tower diving here, but given that level one trade and the way it went, it should be a bit more difficult for them to actually execute. So this is a very late trade from base one as he's trying to get the chickens and red buff now, but where's had free time to be able to get his entire top half of the jungle since he owns that quadrant, he owns that half. Which means, because you wanted to wait a bit of time to try to stagger the respawns of the red buff, you've given Quay back that red, the red buff, his own red buff that you should have been taken away. Exactly what LGD drafted for, and now they might have caught out Crisp. Look for the first engage. Oh, the gonna three be looking man. To double knock up. Look at the damage. It's going to be first blood for Beish One, but everyone's still in the thick of it. Chance going to be the next to fall. Double kill for Beish One. Unit boy, the next to fall, and they get the kill over to LWX. That's Doug Reeves looking for the chase on Kramer. Still underneath the turret. Doesn't want to go for the full commit dive. Instead, waiting it out, chasing Kramer the entire way back to that tier two, saying, "You have to escape from me." That was so smart from FPX. They had the numbers advantage because Jace was oom. Um, he had no mana. He couldn't teleport back into that fight. He would have been too late. And they catch LGD with their pants down. You know, that looked like a decent fight coming in from LGD. They had uh, they had Quay with a, a, a ch chasing on that Udyr, and it looked like a decent lead. But Chris going in was absolutely huge. You know, he got the knock up to start the fight off. And more importantly, Nara was able to come in and just clean this one off. Good target selection from FPX. Uh, they had better focus fire, um, even though even though it was a good crash down from, uh, from Chance to get the three man, still couldn't win the fight. And at the end of the day, the 4v3 does come out trumps. A big one in that too is like, if you watch Quay, he barely got a move. He <laughs> was nope. CC'd for so long throughout in all of that. I mean, normally you talk about Olaf, you're like, oh, he doesn't have to worry about that. Well, he's only level four. There's no Ragnarok. There's no way to get away from that. So if you 
layer up the CC, of course he's not going to be able to do anything. He's not going to be able to have that skirmish potential he normally would have. And now they have this great position for base one with Crisp here to look for a dive on Colt like they did in game one. To try to see if they can punish this. They're going to be able to get the knock up they need to with a lot of damage in. And man, base one rips apart Colt. They can even give the kill over to Elgary if they really want to, but it's going to be Doan B instead that they gift it to. Yeah, we even saw Crisp with a preemptive cut-off flash in that one, just making 100% sure that Cult was going to die and he wasn't going to pick up the wave. In the meantime, the 2v1 doesn't have the wave clear to deal with LWX. They can't punish them on the other side of the map. And that's why it's always nice to draft this Tristana. You can always leave Tristana alone on an island in a 2v1 scenario and say... Clear out the minion waves. You're Tristana. You have that explosive charge that innately will push back every single time, so you're not really in a threat underneath the turret. You can always have that ability to sustain yourself and keep at bay any enemy that would want to dive you. Bro, it's, it's just the wave clear, and of course the one kill and two assists that she got early on, just helping her deal with the wave. That is true. There's no response on the uh, <laughs> on the backside of that one. And now Beitron is in a very comfortable position. 2-0 and 2. This is going to be a hyper early turbo chem tank. And what we've seen about early turbo, uh, turbo chem tanks is uh, once you get it, like, it's so easy to get lane kills. You can run directly underneath the enemy tower, have the tankiness to survive and just take the shots. And if any lane is even pushed up remotely, you just get a kill. Ooh. Oh. Flash. Oh, no, Cole. You flashed already trying to get that solo kill on an Ugri, and now you're into the alcove. Ishwan, I'm surprised you didn't actually want to commit for it. Maybe it's because they noticed on the other side Walker the Quay's going to be here soon. Is he going to be able to go Mega? Not going to be able to in time. Instead, there's going to be Beishwan stuck underneath the turret. Walled bot lane, a 2v2 dive attempted, giving a kill over to LWX. Chance now fighting against this Tristana, who's just taking plates, getting more gold into their pockets to be able to beat out Chance and might even look for yet another dive. But this time, it's Solo flashed <laughs> over the wall to survive. Uh, so clean from FBX. They, uh, I believe they ticked level 6 first and then just went all in onto the enemy bot lane lgd uh we didn't really see how kramer went down but uh, we're gonna get a replay of that one there of course go. uh lwx is level six so he has massive burst damage with the buster shot gets the kill early and even if he didn't get chance here it would still be an advantageous trade the wave is pushing in into the enemy opponents and then just chance just loses his mind like he has a mind full of revenge He's trying to avenge his uh, dead AD carry. Whoa. Everyone goes down. Two for seven now on the kill score. We're not even eight minutes into the game. FBX already had 3,000 gold. I mean, this is a typical FBX gameplay, is it not? <laughs> Playing aggressively early into the game, even if you have your jungle fall behind early, doesn't matter. Find fights, win game. That is always the game plan of FBX. You now have full control with a 3,500 gold lead. They have control around the Rift Herald. LGD are trying to see if they can push back FPX, but really, they're just grasping at straws to try to be able to at least get something back. Maybe if they can get this Rift Herald, they'll be a good influx of gold into their pockets. It's not even a maybe, it's a have to, because LWX is playing PvE on the bottom side. I, I like this setup from, uh, from FBX. This is a really smart setup, um, as we are gonna get of a replay for how Seraphine died here. A pretty straightforward combo with uh, the earlier roam coming in from Crisp. And this is a situation where we talked a lot about in the LPL, basically the five man Herald versus the four versus one split. And the four versus one split usually comes out ahead. In order for the five man Herald to succeed, you not only have to take the tower, you also have to get the kill. Uh, because you are losing out on experience as well, while the enemy team is gar taking guaranteed turret plates. So, Whenever you see this play happening, the team that invests five man is already putting themselves behind. F FBX play go oh, for two man, plays this on the looks map. Familiar on a Uniboy who gets dove easily. Another kill over to Doinby. Third one of the game. Shelly will be popped in the top lane to get a little bit of gold back for LGD. Like you said, they have to have something. They have to get any kind of gold influx because they are falling so far behind to FBX. That Look at this. Agree, doesn't even care. He's by himself. Sure, you have chance here to be able to get the stun onto him, but he's going to be able to hop away from that one. Had Nar just in case if you wanted to be able to throw someone into the wall, and he keeps dodging a lot of these skill shots. Yeah, he's keeping himself very much alive here, and 
I, I think the problem with this play in general is LGD couldn't match 4-1. Um, they couldn't leave uh, Kai'Sa underneath tower versus LWX at the, this point. LWX actually just was way too far ahead. He's 3-0 and 2. So <laughs> he could actually strip the tower in the bot side uh, alone. And LGD were first forced with a lot of uncomfortable options. They either had to stay 3-2 um give over the herald top or they had to all in on the herald play so they decided to go all in on the herald play but that still gives even more gold over to uh to fbx in the end so i, I just like that setup from fbx it was so smart they sent four man to the herald and they force a response out of lgd there are no good options for lgd and they have to answer a bunch of bad decisions that they have to make because they're forced to make one of them like you said and with this lwx has a pretty massive lead over that of Kramer, and Kramer's usually the one that they need to be able to rally behind, try to be able to utilize his position to be able to win these fights. And with this draft, it was different. It was Quay and it was Colt that they wanted to be able to fall back behind. Unfortunately, after one botched fight, oh, everything no, went no. awry. So now they're trying to see if they can reset <laughs> the play, get more gold over to Kramer so that they can fall back onto the normal, typical style. Not gonna lie, that was kind of troll from Chance as he takes away the kill with the spear right there. Would have been better on his carries, but uh, <laughs> definitely not what you want to do as a support in a 100% certified kill. Uh, we are going to see LGD take away everything from the bot side, but again, it's going to be at the cost for a two for one. And it looks like uh, FEX can actually just take away the mid lane tower. Seraphine's getting completely zoned away. 0-3-1 now with no moon staff build against the finished Loon's Tempest. Um, and this is this is LTD trying to make the proactive play to get back tempo, but I, I also feel like FBX are the ones that are still dictating what happens on the map. They're basically dangling Nuggery around on the weak side and saying, hey, come for this trade. You want the trade, you want to do something. And then FBX get the bitter deal. <laughs> and again, all 15 plates taken by FBX. Two games in a row, they're able to get every last one of them. Well, this time around, at least some were picked up by LGD. They were able to get the turret topside with the help of Rift Herald. Bot lane only having one remaining and mid lane having one taken. That's still at least something, I guess, but we're 12 and a half minutes into the game and there's nearly a 5,000 gold lead. And unlike last time, where a lot of that gold was put topside into Nuggery's pocket, it's LWX who has this insanely large lead. When you have a Tristana that's up in levels, two levels up, he was actually three levels up just three seconds ago. <laughs> this just means he's gonna have a massive range advantage. He's gonna be able to siege much easier. And I think FBX might be going for the fastest game. The, this time around. Uh, the, the record is 20 minutes, 16, and I definitely think that they can close it out before then with this type of a lead. When you have a Tristana who can take these turrets that quickly, has a second item already completed in that Phantom Dancer. You have a, wait a minute, you have a second item completed. We're 13 minutes into the game. <laughs> yeah, we are. This really smart play from FBX. I, I like what uh, they did with LWX. It's just, you leave him on an island and you use the other four to force the enemy team to over rotate. And he just gets to play against towers by himself. He's chunking out the solo laners at this point. He's level 10 versus level 9 on cult. Uh, there's just, there, there really is no coming back uh, in this situation. Ooh. And I, I feel like the best idea for LGD was actually to try and get Seraphine on one of these side lanes. Uniboy did have a teleport and try to stop one of these sieges. Instead, they always went for the tower trades. And uh, with the tempo difference, I, I'm not sure it was ever worth it. LGD, though, attempting to see if they can make a play on the LWX. Unfortunately, he's kind of taunting them. You talked about Hagen agree on his train being like, all right, that's this one. But it's really LWX who's trying to do that. Look at the damage! <laughs> what the go? hell happened to Quay oh there? God. That was a 1v2, and he's going to be able to take down Chance. That's sure, a reset Chris will too. get a little bit of credit, but they've got the reset. Colt, you're two levels down to the ADC of LWX. There's no way in hell he can fight back. Chris actually didn't do anything in that fight. That was, that was basically a 3v1 for the AD carry. The first damage on the Quay was so damn disgusting. And it's crazy to see an AD carry two levels ahead of the solo laners. Jesus. This is what a fed Tristana will do. 
Yeah, and keep in mind, oh, we are we 15 go. minutes into the game, the Encore connects, and they have four members. They're trying to see if they can lock down LWX, but there's still a lot of damage on the chance, and they're going to be able to get the first kill they need to for LWX, getting a lot of damage on the Uniboy. He's going to be able to get the heal to be able to stay alive. They threw a boulder at the head of Uniboy. Here's the flash, Jay. They got what they need to on the Quay. They're looking to take them all down. It's only going to be cool. Finally getting some sort of shutdown with Kramer showing up to be able to battle back a little bit, but it's going to be the inhibitor turret that finally falls. Three, four, three traded. LGD at least can resist the full defeat at this moment. Not too bad, not too bad for LGD. That was a, that was a decent comeback. A little bit over hypey from FBX as they go underneath the tower. Um, but even in that fight, you could see how difficult it was to actually tag out onto LWX. LWX was actually able to buffer jump away from the uh, the, the minions there, uh, from the Anker. But we're gonna take a look at the 1v3. Very easy burst damage onto an under-leveled Olaf. Doesn't even have the Stride Breaker or the Green, uh, or the Gore Drinker. No first mythic item. And watch LWX here. This is why Tristana is so powerful, because she can dodge out on the Alistar, on the Seraphine, and also the Rel. Like, she, she can buffer so many different combo abilities, it makes chasing after her very, very near impossible to do. And here, I mean, like you said, a bit of an overcommit for this entire play <laughs> from LWX. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, you, did you really need to do that? But honestly, does it really matter? Because now they're trying to make this play again oh, on Dolanby this time around. But look at LWX. That's really the target you need to be able to take, even though this could be so point that you put yourself in a position for for LGD, you still have to worry that LWX, the carry of the FBX is still alive. A uh, bit of a panic herald coming in from FBX, but they're willing to take this 4v5. Oh, okay, maybe I not. They're, not. they're not really going to be that crazy. I thought they were actually losing their minds, but no, Same they here. don't go into that. <laughs> I was really thinking that that's what they were going to do as well, but instead they're like, oh, free gold mid lane. Let's get more gold for LWX. He's waiting for that Guardian's Angel. Yeah, interesting play here. Oh, it actually turns out quite decent. They get, uh, I think, one tower only, but still, that's, two that's quite a bit. Two. They get two. Oh, two. Okay, okay. And that's still worth it for them, as they, they don't even have a Baron to play around, which is kind of the crazy part about this map right now. <laughs> Yeah, it's 17 minutes into the game. This feels like it's a lot later than it really is. Yeah, and I, I want to see uh, how how uh, LWX itemizes here, because a lot of players in this situation, they actually will go for the Storm Razors, just because it has that extra slow and the crit down um, uh, to, to catch people out a little bit better. Uh, when you're this far ahead, um, the Lord Dominic's regard actually doesn't make as much sense uh, on Tristana. I, I mean, usually third item is going to be the Infinity Edge, but it, it depends on how you want to play. You could definitely go for solo lane split push Tristana and just go for Storm Razors for a bit of fun here. <laughs> could be. I was like, if, if you look at what's built so far for LGD, nobody's got any resistances. Like you Oop. said, who, who needs the last Whisper item? <laughs> you don't really need it when nobody's got any Resistance is to be able to survive the damage you're throwing oh. out anyways. LWX is going to go for the safe play. Yeah, just go for the Infinity Edge. Of course, that is the standard answer. Um, definitely gets uh, more DPS out here. But, you know, a man can hope. A man can hope. It would have been nice. I'm with you. I mean, I still miss the days of full AP Tristana. Back with my Deathfire Grasp. Those were, those were good days. Good days. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she's still pretty ridiculous. Like, uh, we still have some AP ratios. Um, it's not the same. It isn't. I'm, really I, isn't. Like, I remember the days where you Goomba stomped people, you killed them almost immediately with the Buster Shot, and if they didn't die, your explosive charge was a little different. It was the burn effect. That oh, was a lot the stronger. flash Ooh. from Uniboy. Tried LWX though. He was reading that play wisely and knew what was about to happen So they're gonna be able to crack open yet another inhibitor turret The final one that remains might be able to get their first inhibitor of the game as well with LGD kind of just watching on and awe. They don't know what to do at this moment Look at the damage that happened to the chance on the other side. They're forced back underneath their Nexus turrets here 19 and a half minutes into the game. They're forced under the Nexus turrets the Second inhibitor will fall. They look like they could have gotten LWX there, but Ooh. they don't have the confidence, even with the damage that can come in from Colt. They don't want to fully commit just yet. Nuggery, though, 
He's gonna actually try to take the objective. I thought that he might stick around, sacrifice his own life to be able to get the third inhibitor, but instead, they're gonna be able to back out of the fight completely. A bit afraid since LWX did get taken pretty low by those shock blasts coming in from Colt. Yeah, and at this point, LWX only has the red buff, so the damage will stick uh, just a little bit, and that's enough to ward them away. That would have been triple inhibitors, so once you get that, it's uh, the double amount of oh, super minions. Uh, LGD stay alive for now. Chris, look at Kramer just going right into the middle of FBX to be able to get the support kill. Hulk took a lot of damage from the command attack out of Doan B, but all five members alive from LGD, they got the pick they need to onto Chris, and guess what's up? It's the Baron. This could be the comeback for LGD. We're seeing Doinby actually going for a base and looking for the TP to come back in. That was a great play from Chance to actually block away Baytron. LWX, this is your time to shine. 2v5. They want to be able to get into the pit. It's going to be the Encore onto LWX, but the smite goes over to Quay, having to go gold. And LWX still barely alive, flashing away, but He's it's out. finally the Shock Blast to take him down. Shockwave onto four members, though. It's massive out of FBX. They don't need LWX anymore. Not when you have that kind of play to rip apart. LGD, Uniboy, the last member, finally falls. It's an ace for FBX, and that is going to be the series. They're racing against the clock just 10 more seconds they could get the record come on come on uh, can someone please hit the base oh they're no trying, they're not gonna they're make too it late they're not gonna be able to make it it is gonna be the game for fpx they find the ace around the desperation baron out of lgd and they will win 2-0 it was very, very close to actually taking away the fastest game, but, you know, that's that's still a very, very great series for them to have, actually finishing off in less than 45 minutes.